If you have ever played Baldur's Gate 3 or even just seen the promotional material, you might be familiar with this character. Or this one. Or this scene that happens right in the beginning of the game. What I'm trying to point out is there is a lot of Devil and Hell references in this game. Which is not really that far-fetched, since we know from the developer talks that the story of Baldur's Gate 3 actually builds upon Descend into Avernus, a quite popular 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons campaign. And this connection is what I want to explore a little bit closer in this video, especially when it comes to the infernal aspects, the devils, hell, and one individual in particular, Sariel. If you haven't already guessed it, there will be a lot of spoilers for Baldur's Gate 3 in this video, but also for the book Baldur's Gate Descent to Avernus, which is a great D&D campaign, so if you plan to experience it by yourself, I totally understand if you want to pause the video until you finish playing. If you have already played some D&D adventures, you probably know that many stories can have different paths and different endings, and it is not always clear which ending is canonically correct. I'm gonna try to tell the story the way that best fits the events from Baldur's Gate 3. Just be aware that you might have experienced a different narrative if you have already played Descent to Avernus. With that being said, Let's take a look at the Lord of the First herself. Zariel is an archdevil and the ruler of Avernus, the first layer of the Nine Hells. Her main goal and what drives most of her actions and decisions is her dedication to end the blood war between devils and demons that rages over primarily Avernus but some other planes as well. She's described as a figure with scorched skin, leathery wings ruined by flame, eyes glowing with white hot rage and a fiery halo burning on top of her head. She also lacks one of her hands, which has been replaced by a flail. Zariel was best known among the Archdevils for her martial prowess. She is a very deadly combatant. Her weapon of choice is Matalotok, an ancient warhammer forged by Thrym, which she took from the demon lord Kostchi in battle. Zariel's troops are probably best known for her flying fortresses, massive basalt structures about 140 meters high that are usually manned by hundreds of devils, but could also be controlled telepathically by only Zariel herself. Similar to most devils, Zariel is a plotter, dealing in contracts to bind people to her will. Those who displease her are subjected to horrible fates and she has become well known for inflicting psychological torment upon her subjects and her foes alike. Zariel is notorious for her foul temper with her poor emotional control impeding her ability to act rationally and pragmatically. Which probably stems from a deep distrust in other people. More on that a little bit later in the video. Karlek is a very prominent example of what Zariel is ready to do to achieve her goal of winning the blood war. The tiefling woman was sold to Zariel by her former employer Gortash, who himself had some quarrel with another devil named Raphael. Probably not a bad thing to strike a deal with an archdevil in a situation like that. Zariel didn't want Karlek as just another soul to fuel her war machines or as a regular part of her legions. Karlek was an experiment. Zariel literally ripped out Karlek's heart and replaced it with a machine, an infernal engine to increase her battle prowess and make her more dependent towards her devil mistress. You brought some infernal machinery with you. A little gift from Zariel. Keeps me burning hot. Karlek had to fight for Zariel for a long time in the Blood War, until she was able to escape Avernus on a Mind Flayer airship heading towards the Material Plane. Zariel is not very invested in politics, which makes her a bit of an outsider amongst the rulers of hell. Most of the other archdevils are not very fond of her and would love to see her replaced. First among her enemies is probably her current advisor and predecessor as Lord of Avernus, a devil named Bell. However, none of them openly oppose Zariel, not just because she is quite fierce herself, but also because she was appointed by Asmodeus himself who sees her kind of as his crown jewel, his greatest achievement, or maybe just his favorite pet. Now, I guess this is as good a time as any to talk a little bit about Asmodeus. Asmodeus is the lord of the nine hells and ruler of all devil kind, residing in Nessus, the ninth and deepest layer of hell. While I do not want to get too deep into the discussion about Asmodeus himself, I think it is important to know a few things about him in order to better understand the story of Zariel, the Blood War and Avernus in general. 
Asmodeus mostly appears in the form of a charming and good-looking man, around 4 meters tall with red skin, horns on his head and glowing red eyes. He does this because his real form is a massive, gigantic serpent that stretches hundreds of yards, which would make talking to others a little bit tough. But talking is one of Asmodeus' best skills. What exactly Asmodeus is, is a little bit uncertain. Some believe he might not actually be a god. Because his power doesn't depend on followers, he's not really able to grant spells. But despite this, he actually can create avatars, which is typically a divine ability. Today, however, many consider him not just a god, but an immensely mighty one. Which is kind of logical, considering that even the dragon goddess Tiamat is more or less confined within his realm and unable to escape because of his powers. Also, many other evil deities that reside within the lower planes are quite dependent on Asmodeus actually wanting them to be there. Asmodeus is lawful evil personified. He is a top-notch planner and communicator. As the ruler of the Nine Hells, he can alter the look of the realm in whichever way he wants. Even though he claims to primarily aim for stability and to secure his own powers within Hell, Asmodeus actually aims much higher. He truly thinks that his wisdom and his abilities are what could make the entire universe amazing under his rule. He believes that everything would be flawless if everyone followed his laws. That's his ultimate goal. It's important to remember this when talking about Asmodeus later on. Zariel rules over Avernus, which is the first and topmost layer of the Nine Hells, one of the planes of existence that are in Dungeons and Dragons cosmology, classified as lower planes, the home of demons, devils, certain evil deities and other creatures that are more likely to follow the evil alignment. The Nine Hells, or Bator in devil language, are the realm of Asmodeus and home of his kin, the devils, which represent the lawful evil alignment. It consists of nine layers, each of which is ruled by an archdevil. Avernus was originally a very beautiful place, with lush green fields, flowing rivers, and even bustling cities, culture, and commerce. Avernus' sky is often described as ambient red, like an eternal twilight. To me that always sounded like before the Blood War, it must have had a similar vibe as Twilight Town from Kingdom Hearts. Asmodeus intended Avernus to be a honeypot, a close to perfect world, at least at first glance, to tempt mortals and trick them into selling away their souls. However, Avernus is also the place where the river Styx flows, which is basically one big portal between the lower planes that makes it a prime location for demons to raid the Nine Hells. Now, demons are quite similar to devils, but not bound by laws and rules. They are chaotic and love destruction for destruction's sake and violence for the sake of violence. They just want to see the world burn. There is nothing regulating any demon society. Whoever is the strongest rules. The feud between devils and demons exists longer than anyone can remember. But when hordes of demons started to invade Avernus, it started to become more intense and bloodier than ever. The once pleasant realm of Avernus quickly turned into a barren wasteland torn apart by fire and war machines, with grey clouds darkening the twilight. This confrontation became known as the Blood War. Asmodeus quickly realized that from a purely military perspective, the Blood War was senseless and nothing more than a waste of precious resources. The swarms of demons were literally unending and maintaining an army that was able to meet them in battle was not cheap. However, it seems that there were some upsides to it, as the continuing confrontation rewarded the Lord of the Nine Hells with a unique position among the gods. He declared, probably rightfully so, that if it were not for him and his devils, the hordes of demons would spread over the whole multiverse and destroy all of existence. While he has most of his followers convinced that winning the blood war and driving back the demons is his main goal, he might actually have a hidden agenda, and it is not clear if ending the war is actually in his best interest. The Lord of Avernus was for a long time the devil Bell. While being immensely powerful, Bell was also a very cautious and defensive commander, who at times seemed 
almost overwhelmed by the spontaneity and unpredictable nature of the demon hordes, which was probably not something that Asmodeus preferred at the time. And this is where we come back to Zariel. Zariel was once an angel, a solar under the command of the Morning Lord Lathander. You remember the guy whose temple we... Yeah. Yeah. She was tasked with tracking the progress of the blood war in Avernus. Over time, she became really obsessed with the war and started enjoying the idea of actually fighting in it. Zariel strongly believed that angels should defeat evil. She thought that if the Celestials, the angels, joined the battle, they could end the blood war and stop the fiends from wrecking the multiverse. Despite arguing with her superiors, they kept telling her not to get involved. But at some point when the demon lord Yinogu attacked a village that was supposed to be under her protection, Zariel got fed up and that was the final straw for her. Just a quick reminder, if you liked the video so far, you might also want to subscribe to my channel to stay up to date with any new content that I make. No pressure, but it's really awesome stuff. I'm also quite active on threads lately, which up until now still is quite fun. You can follow me there too, the link is in the description and probably somewhere on the screen right now. Fiends were causing chaos in the fields of the dead near the city Elturel. They were destroying crops, killing animals, burning houses and kidnapping people. Elturel's cavalry fought hard against these fiends, but suffered heavy losses and the creatures just kept coming in larger numbers. The leader of Elturel urged everyone to pray for help from the gods. Surprisingly, help arrived just the next day in the form of Zariel. She claimed to have found the gate through which the devils were entering the fields of the dead. Zariel promised to lead the cavalry through this gate to defeat the devils where they gathered. In Elturel, she put together and trained a huge army, leading them through the gate into Avernus. This is why the mounted forces of Elturel would later be known as Hell Riders. Valiantly, they fought against Bellas Infernal Legions, as well as demonic forces led by the likes of Yinogu or Baphomet. However, some of the soldiers fled, shut the portal behind them and left most of their comrades trapped. Although at Elturel being celebrated as the Hell Riders, they hid the truth about abandoning their comrades. Instead, they claimed Zariel and her army had fallen, pretending to be devastated by the loss. Facing overwhelming odds against the devils and the demons, the remaining soldiers were defeated and those who survived fled in fear and disgrace. Enter Asmodeus. He sent people to rescue Zari, who was buried beneath the dead. He allowed her to recover and praised her bravery. Asmodeus, known for his persuasive ways, seized the opportunity. He convinced Zariel, an angel abandoned by her god and her troops, to align herself with him. He promised her power, asking in return that she fight alongside him in the blood to safeguard the multiverse. Zariel agreed, transforming into an archdevil ruling Avernus and even being dubbed Asmodeus' champion. Zariel never forgot those who deserted the battlefield during her failed invasion of Avernus and had long been waiting to exact her revenge. Almost a hundred years after she left Elturel with the host of Hellriders, the city was conquered by a vampire lord and a priest called Tavius Creek called out to any power to save his city. Which so far is the second time in about a hundred years that this city is hoping for a Deus Ex Machina. Zariel emerged from a pillar of fire, offering him a deal he readily accepted. Zariel gave Tavius a tool known as the Solar Insidiator, more commonly known as the Companion, a glowing sphere as radiant as the sun that bathed Elturel in holy light, destroying the Vampire Lord's army and sending him back into the shadows. Tavius took credit for the appearance of the Companion and was hailed as a savior, rising to become the High Overseer of Elturel. The price for this salvation, however, was damnation, just a little bit later, which Tavius knew very well. After fleeing to the neighboring city of Baldur's Gate and ensuring his own safety, Tavius watched from a safe distance as the radiant sun Zariel has provided transformed into a black orb crackling with lightning. 
the solar insidiator ripped Alteril from the material plane and transported it and its inhabitants directly into Avernus, leaving only a crater behind. Among the people that descended with Alteril was also Older Ravenguard, the Grand Duke of Baldur's Gate and Marshal of the Flaming Fist. If you've played Baldur's Gate 3, you might also know him as Will's father. In fact, his trip was part of Thalmara one Thal Thal Thalmar Thal was part of Falamra One Thumper's scheme to appease the Archdevil's Ariel and ascend as the new Grand Duke of Baldur's Gate. Without Older's leadership, the Flaming Fist hierarchy collapsed and military became overwhelmed and lashed out against Baldurians with brutal retaliation. Meanwhile, in Elturel, on the plain of Avernus, Older was telepathically assaulted by the demon lord Baphomet and put into a catatonic state. Dragging Alteril down to Avernus was however not the end of Zariel's plan, as she intended to use the inhabitants of Alteril and their souls to fuel her armies in the blood. The only reason this did not happen immediately was an increased number of demons appearing as soon as Alteril descended, which kept Zariel kind of occupied. However, to her it was only a matter of time until she dealt with this nuisance. She also wanted to drag down other cities to hell and had already set her eye onto Baldur's Gate. Fortunately, a group of adventurers managed to both free Older Ravenguard and save Elturil from total damnation. Elturil returned to the material plane, but that doesn't mean that everything was back to where it was before. The nation was basically in shambles, and while there were probably attempts to rebuild, many people have lost their livelihoods and tried to find another place for themselves and their families. Tieflings especially were shunned, since they kind of look a lot like devils, and a lot of them were emigrating from Elturel to other places. One of these groups of refugees, led by former Hellrider Zevlor, left Elturel on the way to the closest large settlement, Baldur's Gate. However, they did encounter a variety of obstacles on their way, as most of you who played Baldur's Gate 3 already know, since this is basically where the game continues the narrative that started in Descent to Avernus. What exactly happened to Zariel is unclear. But we can expect that she is still in power, as she still has subordinates we can encounter, and the blood war is still far from being over. This is it for today. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click the like button and leave a comment just to please the algorithm gods. And if you want to stay up to date with all the new stuff that I make, you can just subscribe to my channel so you don't miss anything. I try to make a variety of videos on gaming, films, pop culture, like the one you probably see linked on the screen right now. And for an overview of all the other stuff that I make, just check the links in the description. Other than that, have a great time and see you guys soon.